Hi, today I want to take a look at the Xbox 360 and the controller rechargeable battery, the nickel metal hard drive battery that was in there. Obviously we did have uh, normal AA batteries back in the day, but these, went, these were uh, quite cumbersome and annoying to have to replace in the middle of a game, so the rechargeable ones were really good. So I've been looking for a modern alternative. What you're going to need is an original battery, a 50-30-40 LiPo battery and a TP4056 charge controller and a bit of super glue, a couple of bits of wire and some captain tape. This model set you back about a tenner, so it's quite cost effective. So first comes first, you need to cut your way into the original battery. Basically follow what I'm doing and don't cut your fingers. This isn't too difficult, just a little craft knife or a Stanley blade or something like that. Just be very careful obviously of your fingers in case this slips. Just cut along the areas that I've been demonstrating in the video. And basically then it'll just come apart quite nicely. Just gently prise it apart and everything will come. Be careful of the spring on that because that does tend to disappear over your shoulder if you're not careful. Next step is to just separate the batteries and remove the temperature sensor for that's in the middle of the two batteries. All we've got to do then is just wiggle the terminals and they will just fracture and break off. Then just dispose of the battery responsibly as always as you know. So we're no longer going to be using that. So we are going to reuse the charge board. So just wiggle off these terminals off the board itself. They come off quite easily. We want to save that temperature sensor. And a couple of blobs of solder there. These are the two main connections in from the battery. So we are going to be reusing that. And we are going to be reusing this little board just to transfer some of the power. So take one of the insulated strips that join the battery to that little board. Just snip off the ends. And what we've basically got there is a nice little very thin very slim little connection so on the back of this board where the connections are that join the controller or the charge controller there is one on the board there is one little connection called VCC now that is the charge input from your controller or you know a, a charge base you know that uh, you can come from and that's what the charge comes from that charges the battery internally if you know what I mean so we're going to connect that very as, as gently as we can and as flat as we can as you can see there, so it's, it's pin VCC, and that is now soldered on, and it's got an insulated strip. So what we're trying to keep, keep that insulated away. Obviously, because that's there, it's, it's slightly bigger than the recess that was designed for the battery holder. So just need to make a note of where that lands, and then just using a Dremel or a Stanley blade or something like that, need to remove some of the material, just so that the board then goes back in flat against the base of that battery holder uh, and it's not being forced or anything like that so as you can see when, when we bend it round that's what the I found that's the best way and the most robust way of taking a feed that's what this this is basically going to be our uh, voltage input to our charge controller so that's going to come from the you know whatever we're charging this battery from and then it's going to go through to our charge board. So as you can see, I'm just refitting it, just getting a, a feel for how that board sits in there. I'm just going to mark it, just so it's a little bit easier to see where I need to Dremel. And just keep trying it and offering it up until you get a nice flat connection and everything sits nicely in there. So what we're basically doing here is we're removing the nickel metal hydride battery and we're replacing it with a LiPo but we're piggybacking over the original charge controller. So all the functionality and the, and the way that the Xbox thinks is there is all in, still intact. What I'm doing here is just removing the USB, uh, the micro USB connection that was on this board and just tinning all of the connections ready. So what we're gonna be doing, just gonna bend this little flat flex, if, if that's the right word, just moving it to one side just so that it can come up the rear of the circuit board. If I if I install the circuit board like this over the top, that little flat section will then pop up at the back and will connect nicely into the top left of that board as it's shown, which is the input, the charge voltage input into that charge controller. Next up, I'm gonna tin. I've used some silicon wire for this, so I want it to be quite robust and, and strong, but nice and flexible at the same, same time. So. I'm going to solder this as flat and as nicely flat as, you know, so that I've not got any bulges or any spikes in this, on the solder or anything like that. I've done about five or six of these now. Um, that board 
the original board there sometimes I've hot glued it or melted some of the plastic in this particular instance I don't know if you can notice inside that I've melted some of the plastic that surrounded the board because you forced it out it tends to want to pop back out again so I just melted a bit of that plastic just to keep that nicely firmly planted while I'm building the battery so what I'm doing here is just putting a bit of double-sided tape onto the charge controller now that acts there's two things it acts acts that one that it'll mount the board and stick it to the top of the circuit board there that which is obviously going to keep it in situ and it's also going to offer some insulation even though the board has a silk screen and there is nothing really no components on the underside of this board it's going to be nice just to put a, a nice barrier a nice sponge barrier between the two circuit boards so I've got nothing that's going to short out so I'm quite happy with that how it's gone so far there so next this is the, again, this is the main power coming into the board, which is going to actually operate this charge controller. So I've snipped it off where I'll, about where I want it, and I'm just going to remove some of that heat shrink tubing that, they, that has been put over there, just so that I can then solder that to this board. Probably should have thought about this a little bit beforehand. Maybe I could have measured it and done a bit more engineering work in this, but I'm, I'm thinking a lot of this on the fly. But I have now done, like you say, five or six of these, and I've been really uh, pleased with the, the, the finished article, as it were. This pretty much follows on from the Dreamcast that I did um, a few, you know, about a few weeks back. Um, so I'm just obviously tinning this up now, this board, and soldering it to the main power input to the charge controller. Now this board takes five volts, well up to five volts, should I say, so it's gonna be, it's gonna accept the charge from the Xbox 360. So that's basically our power coming into the board. The purpley red wire is the going to be the output from this board. So uh, what I'm just doing here first, I'm just making sure I've got no short circuits to any of the power rails and stuff like that. So it's just, just worth double checking that everything's all good and it's, it's all isolated and there's no uh, shorts or joints or anything like that. The, the power's gonna go where we not want it. So that's gonna be our earth eventually. And that's gonna go there. Now I'm going to unify all the earths. There are three earths that need to go to this board. There's the battery earth, obviously. There's the circuit board earth. And the charge controller earth. So there are actually three earths there, but they're, they're all pretty much in the same sort of area. So we can get away with ex exposing a, a quite a bit of the internal wire of this, and then solder it across the two pins so there are two pins that are marked earth. There's one that for the battery, for the charge controller, and one for the battery. So at this point, I'm just bridging the two earths together just to unify the earth. So when I do add the LiPo battery, that will make the third earth. And it's okay, because they're all unified and it's only the power supplies that are now need to be separated. So this is going to be the output from the charge board. So this is what is actually going to supply our 360 controller. So I'm just going to tin this up. Then we can get this connected to the top right of this board. A little bit fiddly. I suppose I could have done all this outside of the shell, but again, I would say this is in its a beta stage it's in a test stage it's, you know I've been changing the design as I've been creating this but I thought it would make an interesting video of just me messing around just trying different things and just wondering is there an alternative or something I can do to make these controllers you know the, these batteries sorry um, work again I do like the idea of the lithium battery I do like the fact that it charges quickly uh, the battery doesn't drain that slow, you know, doesn't drain over time that that much, uh, and, it, and it offers very much higher capacities. So on this particular battery that I've used, there's the um, lithium battery that I've got. Uh, it's, there's in the centre the other copper wires are the temperature sensor. The nickel metal hydride was a very different type of battery, so the temperature sensor isn't really going to be a factor on this because the lithium batteries don't normally get that hot not compared to the uh, nickel metal hydride. So I'm just, uni as I said, unifying the 
Earths, all three Earths together on the board. And we're just going to flip it over. As you can see, the live is always taped up because obviously you, these batteries are quite lively if you short them out. So you just have to pay a lot of respect to these batteries. Always have um, a lithium bag, a uh, fire bag in, in or around your place of work because if you do punch one of these batteries or you short circuit it or you do something wrong obviously they are a self-perpetuating battery and what I mean by that is that you can't put them out once they go they go um, so you even if you submerge them in water they are still technically you know destroying themselves so what I'm doing here is just checking that the charge controller and it is all working. As you can see there, the red light is on the side and it, the red light on the board is on. So it's currently charged. As I press it against the charger, you can see it's now charging the battery. So this is the battery pretty much nearly finished now. We're just going to do a, a bit of testing. Just make sure everything is working all okay. But as you can see, it's a pretty simple mod. I'll just go over it again. So that's the power out into the original board that's the power in from the you know, your charging medium of choice there's the earths and the meat and there's the battery positive so just to offer i've done different things here in this instance i've put some captain tape on um other ones i've done with hot glue i think if if i think really which would which was the best technique um i think the hot glue tended to be more satisfying for myself just because it keeps wires separate and stuff like that so what I'm doing here is adding that some double, more double sided tape just to offer some separation between the board and the battery but I do think maybe the the, the um, a mixture of hot glue on the wires just to make sure there's good separation there's, there's no movement and then some double sided tape to mount the battery did work out quite nicely the beauty of this battery is if you'll notice in a minute once I've finished sticking it all together um, this, this battery actually fits almost perfectly it is the right length it's not too long it doesn't interfere with the spring loaded catch at the end so it has worked out very well very very well this battery so that's it basically all stuck in the temperature sensor I am going to refit only because just because I think you know it, it needs to go somewhere I don't want it not not in the circuit in case the charge controller the original charge controller doesn't like the fact of it being removed so I've decided to keep it intact again I, I think it's complete waste of time I don't think the lithium battery is going to um, have any need for that temperature controlled you know, device just a bit of sponge now on the battery now this is just basically taking up the room that's in there now you could put a, another cell on top um, if you wanted I don't think it's necessary but um, I'm just putting some double sided tape just to basically take the room up to, so that all the internals don't rattle around okay we'll just offer this up the spring catch still works that's good now we're going to pop it in the controller or the charger sorry as you'll notice the red LED does come on but it will go off to green so say fully charged that's basically uh, the consequence of changing the battery type. The nickel metal hydride obviously was a lot slower charger, whereas the lithium voltage of the lithium battery raises very, very quickly, so it, that light goes out. So just checking that the spring contacts and everything was working okay there. And now we can sort of finalize the build by putting some super glue on all the, con you know, the edges there, and we can get this sandwiched together. I am curious if anybody else has got any other design tips or any other methods of uh, doing this. I've been very pleased with this so far. Um, it has worked perfectly now. Um, I did the first one over a month ago and I've been happily using these quite nicely for quite a while now. Now you can either wrap some tape around this while that glue sets. I've got one of these little plastic sort of clamps that'll keep it all together while that super glue sets. So that's pretty much it. I'm really pleased with the way it's come together. It's all worked out really well. I've got them inside my little holder. And as you notice under there, there is a lithium a lithium bag there just as offer some sort of fire protection. I don't trust any LiPo battery really. Just as a little bit of a bonus, I'll give you a look round my man cave. Um, I'm thinking of doing a, a pretty much a bit of a live tour just to go around some of my collection. But I thought, you know, I'll just do this bit of a loop the loop just so you can see what's uh, 
there in case anybody's got anything of interest they want me to cover or you know there's anything anybody wants me to do but if you've got this far thanks for watching and i'll catch you again in the next video bye for now